Hello, everybody. Hi. My name is Laura Gonzalez, and I welcome you to our Samhain celebration here at Virtual Samhain Circle Sanctuary. Um, I'm Laura Gonzalez. I'm part of the ministry training program for another eight hours. <laughs> Soon to be ordained tonight. Very happy about it. But enough about me. And today yeah. is all about Day of the Dead and cultural appropriation. We did pre-recorded a few segments for you to watch, and I will come back with you live every 10 minutes or so. If you have any questions, concerns, or ideas, please type them on a uh, Facebook feed, and I will be glad to comment and respond to those in between. But for now, I invite you to sit tight, and I thank, of course, everybody at Circle, all the organizers, and volunteers for making this possible. So let's go together and watch Day of the Dead Cultural Appropriation. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Laura Gonzalez, and I welcome you today here at the Ju Social Justice. I'm going to be talking to you about Day of the Dead and cultural appropriation. Uh, I know it's a hot topic, and I know a lot of people don't feel very comfortable talking about cultural appropriation, but we have to talk about these things. And uh, first of all, Thank you all for being here at the Samhain Celebration and Circle Sanctuary. And of course, I have to invite you all to listen to all of the CSM podcast podcasts on our very own station. But let me go, so go just go right ahead and jump into the presentation of today. So Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday that is rooted on ancient traditions that come People believe probably 3,000 years ago, maybe 2,500 years ago, give or take, we're not sure. And it, they are part of the calendar of the Mexican, you know, um, calendar, if you will. And it is a celebration that it honors mostly that wonderful lady that you see on your screen, um, Mictecasiwat and Mictlantecutli. These are two forces of nature, two processes actually of our body. And if you Google the word Mictlan, you're going to find that is the underworld of the Aztec religion. And the truth is that the word Mictlan means the place of dreaming or the place of um, rest. And what happens is when we go to sleep, when we are on the REM uh, deep sleep movement, movement of the eyes, um, we are on deep sleep and what's happening is our body is regenerating itself. Our body is healing itself. And our ancestors understood that when we go to sleep, when we do Mikistli, when we go to Mictlan, our body re regenerates itself. So the image that you see on your screen right now represents that processes that happens inside our body when our body is regenerating itself and actually filtering toxins and, you know, redoing all the, repairing all the damage that we might have done to the body when we go to sleep. And both of them represent that aspect of, of our body. And of course they are related to that because we go to Mictlan and we go to Mictlan and we come back and we go to Mictlan and we come back because we go to sleep and we wake up. And then eventually, ideally, if our health is optimal, one day we will go to Mictlan and then we will not come back, right? We will go to sleep and we will go eternally on the rest resting place. Well, our ancestors, the Mexica Tenochca, the people that is now known as the Aztecs, will celebrate this uh, fact and they will add it into their calendar 
and they uh, celebrate for two months two 20-day months so it was a 40-day celebration and the months are called Tlazochimaco and Shokowetsin and Tlazochimaco means when the flowers come and Shokowetsin means the falling of the fruit and this is another metaphor or analogy of a life and death it's about flowering and offering your fruit and eventually decaying and offering you your seed back into the land and then flowering again and that eternal cycle that we see on the earth and that we see with everything that is alive so the tradition was celebrated with two holidays one that was called the Mikaiwitontli and the second one that was called the Wei Mikaiwitl and these two holidays celebrate those who have gone to the Mictlan and never come back. And of course, there was days uh, to celebrate the young death and then the older death. And then what happened is the colonizers arrived and the they got mixed in with um, Catholic traditions. Now, as we all know, Catholic traditions have heavily a DNA uh, that is pagan. And then the Catholicism that came to what is now Mexico, the land of the Mexica Tenochcas in the 1500, it was a Catholicism that was already infused with a lot of pagan traditions. Um, however, we can see that what was conserved and what is vitally at the core of the tradition of Day of the Dead is celebrating those who have passed. This is a scene that we can see in Mexico and every other cemetery, especially in uh, small towns throughout Mexico. Uh, sometimes in the city, you cannot see this uh, scenes as vividly as this one but still it is celebrated on all the country and i always like to emphasize to people that you could be catholic you could be christian you could be an atheist you could be a pagan you could be agnostic or animistic or you could be a person of science that don't believe in none of that but if you're mexican we know for sure on day of the dead our ancestors come and they uh, come and celebrate with us and they partake because it's their day is the day that we celebrate them and of course those two months of the Aztec calendar were cramped into two days when the Catholic religion tried to eradicate the holiday emphasis on try they tried but they couldn't I don't think they could ever I don't think nothing could ever eradicate the celebration of Day of the Dead especially as it had evolved now into what we see now as the tradition of Day of the Dead. Uh, people decorating the tombs, people put in um, all these aspects for purification, the fire, the water, the food, the incense, the flowers. And traditionally, our people will use the flower and fruit because again, the analogy of the two months on the Aztec calendar and everything you see in this photo that is not flowers or fruit is an influence of the colonizers catholicism and that whether we like it or not reshape our day of the dead into what we have been celebrating for the last 500 years uh people will put this marigold paths and um they will take you from the cemetery to their homes and some people will celebrate at home as we see now. Uh, this is a museum example, but that this is what people will do on their homes. And you can see again all these um, elements of paganism that came through the Catholicism and syncretized themselves with the Mexica Tenochka um, traditions and beliefs. And we have the the paper the cut paper we have the marigold flowers we have candles we have water we have bread we have food we have all these traditional elements that represent purification and feasting 
and holiday and and the paper that represents the air to bring on the dead and the flowers and the bread that represent the earth and the richness of life and then the water for the dead to drink but also to wash themselves and to purificate the space and of course the fire to bring that element of uh, energy and purification and as we all saw in the movie Coco there has to be a photo right and in this case they have the Catholic imagery on the altar so this was a 10 minute reduction of my probably three hour origin and traditions of day of the dead which uh, some of you at circle have heard me talk about before but today we're going to talk about unfortunately what it is uh, cultural appropriation and how the holiday keeps evolving um, so much so that now we Mexicans um, have this very, very new aspect to Day of the Dead. Believe it or not, La Catrina, the elegant skull lady, is only 100 years old. She's very, very young, and she has become the 20th century emblematic image of Day of the Dead, created by a Mexican uh, artist, so there is no external influences on it. However, us modern people try to emulate and celebrate dress as La Catrina, dress as the uh, elegant skull lady. And in this case, I was teaching this day and I decided to, you know, wear my makeup and stylize myself as La Catrina, which will not qualify as cultural appropriation because I am Mexican and I can do that. So, uh, the holiday keeps evolving. I have been uh, approached, and I'm very honored to say I have been approached about writing a book for Day of the Dead. And the truth of the matter is you cannot write a book about a, a tradition and culture that is alive and that it keeps changing and evolving with every year. Okay, everybody, I hope you are still watching here and engage. I am trying to monitor the um, the comments as well on the Facebook feed. And one thing that came to my attention, somebody asked about the spelling of the names. So that has been written on the comments for all of you who would like to uh, learn and or repeat or save those names for future reference. And also, as I was saying at the end, towards the end of the video, um, the holiday keeps evolving. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to report this year in particular because of COVID, cemeteries will be closed in Mexico. There will be no access to the cemeteries. And to my recollection, this is the very first time ever that people will not be able to go to the cemetery. I cannot tell you how emotionally taxing that will be on our people. I really hope that there is um, some sense of common sense, if you will, and people understand that it can happen this year. But that is one of the things that goes into the history books, because this year it'll be the first ever that the cemeteries will be closed. So yeah, that is, that is something that is happening. I am looking at the uh, Facebook questions and I don't see, I mean, at the comments on, on Facebook and I don't see any questions. And I know there is a delay between the video and me speaking live to you. So I will wait for a second. Thank you for noticing the earrings. Yes, yes, I got them from a artisan friend here in Chicago. And if you're all interested on the earrings, let me know and I will post her information on the video comments. And right now I'm just gonna model for you for another two seconds, waiting to see if there's any questions, but I don't see any. 
And let me insert a commercial. Listen to CSMP, please. Listen to the podcast. We have over 300 hours of podcasts now archived that you can download, listen, and share. And let's see. I don't see any questions. I'm, I'm refreshing my Facebook feed, just making sure. Nope. Yes, the cemetery is being closed. It's going to be really hard on the living and it's going to be really hard on the dead. Because it, I, I get really emotional just to think about them. They are coming and there's nobody there to welcome them. I really hope and pray in my soul and from the depths of my heart that they go straight to their homes and they know they're loved and remembered and um this is a testament of how heavily ingrained it is in our psyche for mexicans that they come because i'm really getting very very emotional thinking about them arriving and nobody being there all right i see no questions so let's go into the second video awesome When I was growing up, we did not have a day of the day parade in Mexico City. And um, ever since 2016, people have been celebrating a parade for Day of the Dead. And this was uh, brought about by something that happened on very modern times. Remember, this is live. Let's be patient. When I was growing up, we did not have a day of the day parade in Mexico City. And um, ever since 2016, people have been celebrating a parade for Day of the Dead. And this was uh, brought about by something that happened in very modern times. It actually um, was a scene on a movie called Spectre, one of those uh, uh, James Bond movies. And on the movie, there was supposed to to be a parade in Mexico for Day of the Dead, and the Mexican government decided that it looked very cool and that it will attract more um, tourism to the country, so they decided to implement this parade in Mexico City. Some folks in Mexico have embraced it, some folks in Mexico are not very happy about it because they believe that the holiday is being appropriated by capitalism the truth of the matter is again this holiday keeps evolving but when we educate ourselves and we go to the core of the holiday we understand that you can put layers and layers and layers on top of the holiday but it will always remain that pure sentiment of celebrating the dearly departed and celebrating that they are coming to see us that day. That is the most important part of the holiday. And of course, there is colorful uh, vestments and, and, and attires. And these are, these are actually uh, folkloric dances that are uh, dressed as one of, I, I believe this is Jalisco, I'm not sure. Please forgive me, people who dance, if I'm saying the wrong place. But these are people who are dancing and they just have uh, wore makeup to kind of look like Katrina, to stylize themselves as if they were dead people dancing, you know. And again, it has been embraced by some people in Mexico and because it is done for Mexicans, by Mexicans, and it happens in Mexico, it does not qualify as cultural appropriation. Um, this holiday is so beautiful, it's so charming, 
and it's so moving. It is a way, a very healthy way to remember our dearly departed. It's a very healthy way to allow ourselves at least a couple of days a year to mourn our dead. And it's a very healthy and cathartic situation that happens, you know, and in our culture, we do not fear death because we know it's not the end. We know it's just part of that never ending cycle. Um, it is a beautiful thing. And if you think about other cultures in the world, they probably don't have this approach to death that is so perhaps romantic or perhaps healthy or perhaps colorful and, and you know, all these festivities because it's, there is no creepiness, there is no spookiness about it, there is a celebration. And what we are celebrating is life. So of course it's gonna be a charming holiday and of course everybody is gonna fall in love with it and of course everybody is going to love the aesthetics of it. So much so that in 2008, the United Nations added it on the list of, and I have to read this because I don't want to make a mistake, uh, part of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. So it is a holiday that originate on the Aztec times in Mexico, what is now Mexico City, but it is a holiday that has evolved with, with Mexico and Mexican culture and the colonization and even aspects of modern culture, but it is nonetheless a Mexican holiday. And then appropriation happens. And I think it happens because people love it so much, they want to have a little piece of it. And some other cultures will lack this way of celebrating their death. So then we have this horrible thing happening. <laughs> We have people getting very confused, thinking that it's Halloween. And I have heard many times people calling it is the Mexican Halloween. And then uh, I hope you can see my, my mouse here moving, but then they mix uh, the sexy, the dead, and then the Spaniard, the dead. Uh, the, this uh, stylized as Spanish, you know, from Spain people have nothing to do with Day of the Dead. The sexy outfit for Day of the Dead, I don't think so, and then so on and so forth. It just ridiculizes our holiday. It strips completely the very deep value of the holiday, and it just takes our culture and makes it into a custom. And I don't think anybody's culture should be a custom. But if you're not shocked enough by the ladies, let me show you the men. <laughs> I just can't, I just can't because again, we have a stylized as a Spanish person. Then we have the mariachi with no color on the face, but just a skull with spider webs. Sugar skulls in Mexico don't have spider webs. Then these two guys with the high top hats, they look more like Afro-Caribbean, Diaspora, Ifa, Baron Sende, Sende, me, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the name. Samedi, Baron Samedi. Uh, and then this dude, I don't know what's happening here. I just no please don't and then of course this guy has a gun and a very very cheesy smile but what really struck me is that with the ladies they actually have uh wigs as, as well they have dark hair wigs and i'm like what is happening so here i have to pause to tell you a little bit of an anecdote the first time that I went to Circle Sanctuary in 2015, there was a lady who stylized herself as a Spanish dancer. She looked like a dancer from Spain and she had a, a, a mask as Day of the Dead. And she asked me what I thought about her outfit and I say, it's beautiful. This was in 2015. Last year on Samhain, 
there was a workshop and I mentioned how that hurt me. That hurt me to see people dress as Day of the Dead or dress as sugar skulls or because my question is what are you dressed as for Halloween a Mexican or Mexican culture? Because I don't understand. It really hurts. So somebody asked me, and thank you, I thought it was Messina or Nikki, but I'm not sure. But what, somebody asked me why I didn't say anything in 2015. And this brings me to the next thing I'm going to share with you all. Decolonizing oneself, being proud of your culture, and being able to speak up when appropriation happens is very, very difficult. That was my very first time at Circle Sanctuary. I didn't know you all. I didn't know most people at Circle other than Selena. And when somebody asked me what I thought of their outfit, I thought the polite thing to say was, it's beautiful. It really is hard to speak about cultural appropriation or any type of racism or otherism. It truly is a majority of population conversation. We, the BIPOC, the Black Indigenous people of color, can do this. We can do what I'm doing right now. We can tell you it hurts. And your um, expected reaction is to stop. And if you want to go further, is to speak to each other, to talk to each other. Because I have had explained, as I explained to you on PSG about guacamole and how saying guacamole honor our culture and how saying whack hurts me and colonizes me and erases me. And I have been, and this is a term I learned not too long ago, I've been white explained how it's not cultural appropriation, but it's integration. And why is that problematic, etc.? It's not easy. I am talking to you right now, and in the back of my head, I am thinking, oh my God, how many people at Circle are going to hate me after today? It is risky. It's not easy. And we have had that boot of white supremacy on our neck for too long, the boot of colonization for too long. And even though we are free now, it really is still a very touchy subject and it's very difficult. It takes a lot of courage and it takes a welcoming environment like Circle to be able to speak freely about how we feel. So yes, when you go to a Halloween party and you dress like this, or like this, or like this dude right here, it hurts because it erases my culture. It makes my culture and one of the most sacred holidays of our people into a caricature of ourselves. And the definition of appropriation is precisely benefiting from the aesthetics without acknowledging the struggle. And I don't think on this day and age, on Samhain of 2020, I have to make a list of the struggle, but just to remind you a few things, uh, we are being deported, kids are kept in cages during a pandemic, kids are dying in such cages, they are being raped, women are being operated on, the, on um, having hysterectomies done, hysterectomies done, all because we look the way we look or because we come from where we come. So when you want to embrace the holiday of Day of the Dead, also embrace the people where the holiday comes from and do what you can to help us thrive because right now we are surviving. And yes, we all love Day of the Dead and we all love the aesthetics and we all love the deep meaning of the holiday. And if you have educated yourself, you know the deep meaning of the holiday. And you actually want a holiday because you can celebrate in good understanding um, Samhain, Halloween, and Day of the Dead. Why not? 
celebrate your ancestors add the holiday to your uh, celebrations of uh new year end of the year etc but know where they come from and help us come out of that struggle help us not being uh commercialized and appropriate speaking of Okay, we there's there's one more segment to this uh, talk, but what I saw more on the questions was about um, how can we celebrate and how can we integrate the holiday and how can we do that without appropriation? I truly believe, first of all, and I don't know if I said it on the video or not, and if I repeated myself, oh well. Um, of course, you want to be part of this holiday. It's a beautiful holiday. It's also very cathartic. And in my opinion, it's a very healthy way to honor those who have gone. It's an amazing way to bridge the gap between generations. And it is a human sentiment. I don't think it's a, it's a, you know, exclusive to Mexican people. I think everybody uh, yearns for that connection with the deceased ones. I remember a question uh, if Mexicans believe that the veil thins in Day of the Dead. Uh, we don't believe that there is a veil that thins. We believe that they come, period. I mean, I don't know that there is a concept of the veil being thicker or thinner or, you know, it's just, it's a given. Day of the Dead, they come. Uh, so I hope that answers that question. How to integrate the holiday for your personal um, celebration? A, if you put a flower, marigold. If you put uh, some fruit and food for your loved ones, a photo. Uh, Coco was right on that, you know, so just do it. But don't mix the holidays. And I think I talk about it further. And if I don't, I can talk about it later. Um, and uh, my home, I have and a day of the dead altar, and then I have my Halloween decorations, and then I'll have my uh, Samhain celebration, everything separately. Um, those are the questions that I saw the most. Having dialogue and being open to have dialogue with other people, it's, uh, it's important. Um, I also think it's important. I thank you all, and I thank Circle for being a welcoming space to speak about this, but as I was saying on the video, it's not easy. Um, it's really hard to speak about it. And so it's, it's, it's on to white people. The conversation is white on white because I have tried to explain to other people and I have a backlash of white explaining like, oh no, you're wrong and we're right. and that's not necessarily the kind of uh, dialogue that um, we want to have. We really want to have people educating themselves and then talking to other friends. Um, I talk a lot about uh, buying from Mexican artisans and um, celebrating with your family, educating yourself. If you're here, you're getting your uh, knowledge about Day of the Dead, so I think you're absolutely doing the best on education, and um, yeah, I, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to monitor the questions as well, so you know, the dynamics of being live and recorded at the same time, um, but most, the, the most that I saw on the questions was, how can we celebrate without appropriation? So summarizing myself, perhaps repeating, I don't care. Uh, don't, don't fashion yourself as a sugar skull. If you're going to a party thrown by a Mexican person that is a day of the day party and everybody is dressed as a sugar skull and the people at the party say it's okay, then by all means. But otherwise, I don't think it's appropriate but most importantly because it's not a halloween outfit and day of the dead is not mexican halloween day of the dead is not mexican halloween so let's not bring it as a mexican halloween outfit for 
Day of the Dead. Um, do you have any suggestions for folks who, ha who cannot go to the cemeteries? Yes, unfortunately, I think uh, setting up an altar and doing your thing at home is your best bet. I know it's heartbreaking. I know it's really hard this year. Uh, especially we have had so many people that passed away. And if you really want to get into the spirit of Day of the Dead, uh, set up a plate and set up a glass of water for those who might be lost and don't have any descendants looking out for them. Um, with respect and intention, you know, I think everything can be done. Uh, we can celebrate on a healthy way. Um, that's all I have to, on mind right now, folks. I will continue monitoring the questions here. Um, yeah, that, that's the question that I saw repeating the most. So uh, about, you know, how can we celebrate? So let's go and watch the last part of the video and then I will stay a little longer for more questions. Thank you. Speaking of appropriation, of course, uh, we have the Barbie doll. <laughs> oh my God. The Barbie doll, the Day of the Dead Barbie doll. Isn't she beautiful? Of course she is. Of course she is. She's wonderful. She's, a, she's beautiful. She's a doll. I refuse to buy it because wherever you go in the United States, there will be Mexican and or Mexican-American artisans from whom you can buy art that is made by our people, like my beautiful earrings that I'm wearing today. Buy art from our people. Help us. If you like Day of the Dead, buy art by Mexican people who made all kinds of Day of the Dead stuff. Uh, there is more art out there by Mexican artists than nothing else. So I don't think Mattel needs your money. I think those artisans that are part of the micro economy need your favor, need your money. And, um, you know, you will stop the spread of this recolonizing of our holiday. Then we come to the parties and the party favors and have a day of the day party which is very similar to the Cinco de Mayo party. Cinco de Mayo is not our Independence Day and a Cinco de Mayo party is the thing that was created in the United States and it's a hallmark holiday to recolonize us and commercialize our history. Uh, I guess you all in the United States like it so much because it was a war against the French. I can only in, be intuitive and think that's why you all like it so much, but it's now Mexican Independence Day. Well, we do not do holiday, we don't, we do not do parties for Day of the Dead. In Mexico, we do not do parties for Day of the Dead. We go to the cemeteries, we decorate, we decorate home, we get together with family, we eat, but it's not a party. There is no lights, there is no disco, there is no music, there is no dancing. It's not that kind of party. It's a celebration for family. So, of course, now you have even signs that are made, you know, welcome to the party. And here I come to this very crazy paradox. Being an immigrant, living in Chicago, going to these stores, you know, the big box stores like Walmart and Kmart and Target and whatnot, you find this type of things. And guilty as church, I have bought some because they're beautiful. Can't help myself. They're beautiful and I'm obsessed with the other day. But when you look at the package and it says made in Illinois, made in Indiana, made in Texas, and I can think the only people or the majority of people working on factories that produce things that are going to be sold at Walmart, Kmart, etc., are probably Latino, Mexican, Mexican-American, or people of color. 
So do I want to buy it? Maybe if I keep buying it, those people will continue to have a job. Again, if you have the money to buy from a Mexican artisan on your uh, local community, please do that. But if you absolutely must have something that is sold at Kmart, like my dear Gracie and my dear Teresa and I, we have matching leggings with Day of the Dead skulls, uh, because they're so beautiful. And it's, we live in a capitalist world. So ultimately what I say is educate yourself. Educate yourself. No, that is not Samhain. No, that is not Mexican Halloween. And uh, look at this. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's serves 16. So you can eat on my culture and then crumble it up and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> that hurts a lot. Anyway, even on the Mexican Museum in Chicago, a few years ago, this was part of the museum's um, expo exposition. And is that little, little young Katrina, little Americanized Katrina saying, sold out. You know, we've been sold out, it's been bought, it's been absorbed by capitalism. So let me remind you what I always say. The difference between appreciation and appropriation is education. And if you're here today, you're getting your education. Please help us with the struggle. Please help us be the voice of the boys list. Please help us make decisions that will help our people not just survive or thrive. And I thank you all for watching, for listening, and for being part of this wonderful celebration. Uh, as always, never forget that you are love. And I will leave you with my phrase that I say every time I finish one of these um, workshops. And what are we under the skin if no skulls with never ending smiles? Thank you very much. All right, it feels like I'm saying goodbye twice today. Uh, I hope you all like that uh, little explanation about Day of the Dead. I know there is a lot more questions that have been posted and I will take my time, I promise, to go one by one by one in the comments. And if there's anything I didn't answer during the, um, during the uh, viewing of the videos or in between, I will make sure I answer your questions are you, as you post them on the um, Facebook feed. I want to remind you something that is really important. I do not speak for all of Mexico. I do not speak for all of my culture. I speak for Laura and I speak from a place of love and research. I've been researching this holiday since I was 12 years old. I'm 47, you do the math. I've been teaching about it for as many years. I started teaching because one of my teachers, when I was 12 years old, and I say it was an Aztec holiday, tried to ridiculize me and say it, that wasn't truth. And I then found the passion and the drive to learn about the other day, to research and to teach. So once again, I don't speak for all Mexicans. And unfortunately, a common answer that we have with people when we talk about privilege is, well, my other Mexican friends don't get offended. That is not the right answer, folks. Not every person from Mexico feels the same or appreciates things the same or have experiences in life that are the same. So if you have other friends that see you dressed as a sugar skull or having a Halloween outfit mixed with the, the dead and your other Mexican friends are okay with it, there's nothing I can do about it. The same way I can do nothing about it if you want to buy a doll from Mattel. They are beautiful. They are beautiful. And, you know, I don't control anybody. I don't control everybody. I don't intend to control anybody. Um, I My intention is just to educate people, 
to share with you all about topics that are very sensitive. And I do it here at Circle again, because it is a safe space to speak to you all. Do I hold all the truth about the other that? Of course not. Uh, but please be mindful and be respectful. And if somebody says to you, A, that is not a cool outfit to have for Halloween, well, respect that, you know? You can dress as anything else. You can be a bee, you can be a cockroach, you can be, uh, I don't know, you can be a chocolate cake, you can be an M&M. &M. Uh, I remember uh, people being Bob Ross <laughs> for Halloween. I mean, you can be anything you want to be for Halloween. So please don't be a sugar skull because that is um, appropriation. And again, if you want to celebrate Day of the Dead, by all means, get yourself a sugar skull, get yourself some decorations, get, get yourself some flowers, put the photo of your loved ones, put some meals in there for them. Um, make sure there's a, a little dish with water so those souls that have no descendants can come and drink and partake and wash up. And honor the dead. Remember Day of the Dead is celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. It's not celebrated on Halloween night. It's celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. That is the legacy of the Mikai Wittontli and the way Mikai Whittle and they reduce it to two days and they you know pile it up with All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Uh, it is true that Day of the Dead was originally in July and August and September, and it was moved. Um, and last but not least, unfortunately, I always have to speak about Santa Muerte. Santa Muerte is not Mitekasiwa. Santa Muerte is not part of Day of the Dead. Santa Muerte is not the Dark Goddess. It is a folkloric uh, expression of spirituality in Mexico. It has been linked with um, crime and what some might call the dark arts, uh, but it's not the goddess of death. Uh, there is an audio that is floating around the internet where I speak about it. I can hang it on the comments if you wanna learn more about that. And I have to mention that also because as much as I don't work with that icon or celebrate uh, Santa Muerte, it is a Mexican uh, traditional folk magic thing. And I've also seen that now being appropriated in American, uh, North American, United States pagan culture. And it is um, linked with crime. A lot of the times it had a faith uh, fate kind of like the swastika. I will I will hang the audio on the comments here. I thank you all for watching, for being part of the celebration. Um, and please have a safe, loving holiday, guilt-free, uh, free of cultural appropriation celebration of Day of the Dead, November 1st, November 2nd. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you to the dear Num for being the technical magician behind the scenes. Thank you for Circle Sanctuary for once again, inviting me to speak about this topic that is my passion and my love. And thank you all for watching. You are love. Bye-bye.